box cones, jogs, L shapes, parallelogram. So we've got all these kind of basic shapes you could drop into. So if you knew you wanted to do something and you wanted an L shape to come into it, instead of drawing a, a, a feature there, you could drop that in on top of it. I can't do it here, I don't because it, it wants to know what to go on to. Now I'll just add to that to that shaft. If I go to the shaft, go to the part, now it's added that T shape on it. And so I can just go in and edit the feature. And now it's just a sketch again. But if I had edited it in that first box, I could tell it exactly what size it would be. But it's in there, I could go in and edit that sketch. And it's all fully constrained, it's just not positioned. So then I can I, you know, I can position it or whatever. But I can also go back in and these are all all functions I do. Or I can override those dimensions with my own. So that, that's those shapes. So now we've got some grease fittings, O-rings, plugs, ceiling rings. We've got captive nuts, rivet nuts. on what I picked on that list. So up here. Based on the key I pick up here, it filled it in. And you can pick which uh, way you're going to set it instead of on that that okay. plane right there. That was what the... Uh, yeah, based XZ. on this angle. I, right when I did it, the toilet. You have to pick the plane in that assembly. Okay. On the thing that you're putting it on. And that's how you change the angle. Um, same thing with the O rings.
I could do the, the groove as part of the shaft, or I could do it like this and make it put this, the groove in later with the O-ring all at once, which is probably the way I, I'd do it. Hmm. Uh, and the bearings, if you want a bearing where you want to put it, it slaps it in. You can you give it a range that, of sizes that you want it to be. Yeah. So if you put the O-ring in after you did the shaft. Yeah. If you grab it now and move it, will it move the slot as well? Um, right now it's stuck because when I put it in, mm -hmm. I gave it a dimension. But you, if you change the distance there. If I change this dimension? It'll, it'll move the whole yeah. slot with it, right? Yeah. If you did it with the shaft and you put the O-ring afterwards. You'd move it in the shaft and then it'd have to, you'd, you'd constrain it so it moved. So I could say 1.5. Well, I'll put it in there. So I can move it along with, with editing that, the O ring there. Um, also, another thing I can do. Is I'm going to do a couple parts real quick. This is what we call top-down assembly, where I'm making the parts in the assembly, and we'll do this in 4D. two parts there and I want I need all those together It'd be a good thing to do you go to all those together so I could go in each of those and put a hole so I can fold them together right or I go to the design and say bolt connection So now I'm going to tell you I want to start on there. Give me an inch down from there. Half an inch from there. And I'll terminate on that plane. So now it finds out, figures out there's two pieces of material between that. If I had three or four or ten, it would have that many things here. And so Right here, it's asking what kind of thread is going to go through it. So, ANSI, quarter inch, yeah, that looks good. Here, go at normal clearance, close, loose, a custom size, or do I want that piece threaded? So, this top one, I'm going to have a normal fit. Bottom piece, I can tell it to be threaded, and I'll thread through it. Um, and if I had a work plane there, it would go down to where the work plane was. <coughs> um, or now it'll just thread that piece. Or I can tell that piece I want it just a clearance hole also. And then I can say add a fastener. And let it load. Let it load. Um, so I can come in and say I want to have Change this from a hole to a countersink. 
change it here. Oh, here's why I want I change it if I want it blind. If I want the bottom the bottom hole not to be blind, I can put it there. So I pick that. I can't add anything else on top because you can't have anything below a counter. But I can add some stuff on the other side. So so on this side. You can see it's kind of figured out how long to make that the bolt there. If I can kill something else there, I tell it that on this side I want to have a plain washer. Now I want to add, I'll go back to a washer and I want to add a lock washer. Now I want to add a heavy hex. Now I want to add a jam nut. You really don't want that thing to move. No, I don't. This At thing all. is stained. I mean, I'm holding these two pieces together with that one screw. It's got to be good. I hit OK. Say OK. Let's hope your screw is strong enough. Now it's going to put all that stuff in. So in one command I just made, Five new components and two holes. Yeah. So if I go back uh, in easier. and I open this part, it's got a hole in it with a countersink. And you can see over here that it's got a little lock on it. It's because it's coming from that other command, so you don't want to do it and do it here. If I went into that whole connection and I edit it, I can pick. Okay, I really don't want that. To, with that, I want it to be. I want it to be. Uh, oh, it's only enough. I want a socket. Isn't it where you can get a counter ball? Oh, okay. That? Yep. Ah. So I can just go in and make whatever connection I want with that. And just like the whole fan. I guess you only do them one at a time. But also, this is where, the, remember I told you, you want to use holes, not circles that are extruded. Because here, if I had one hole in one of the parts, I could come here and tell it, buy a hole. It would pick up that hole and, and size it and everything, and start from that hole and go down. And I can go to calculation, and on this bolt, these are, that bolt's going to take 225 pounds of force, going that way, F to T for the shear force would be, um, oh, I haven't put anything in here yet. If you know the numbers to put in here, If you know the right numbers to put in, you can do calculations. But in order to get those numbers, you can talk to the engineer. 
They're the ones that know those numbers. Once you get the numbers, you put them in and it'll do calculations and stuff for you. So, <coughs> engineers have their use. <laughs> <coughs> Again, that's a safety thing, so you talk to an engineer. Um, so, any questions on the bolt connection? Then we can also do the compass pin. Same basic thing. I got a question. Yeah. How would you do a recessed uh, nut? You know how some parts have, like, where you put the nut in and it holds it in the actual place so you don't have to use a, uh, like, a ratchet? Um, I don't know if it's that automatically. Let's look. Maybe put the compass pin in real quick. Like a nut that's already there? Yeah, you know, it has, like, the cutout of the actual nut. And you put the nut in there and you screw it in there and it holds it in place. So this would have to be like a certain clip where you don't have an accidental hole in it. Yeah. It just stays there. Yeah. So there's the clevis pin. So let's go back to your bolt connection. I'm going to take off these washers. in that case would be figure out the size so that's a half inch nut so I'm going to edit that Take that bottom plate where you screw no. it into, or I'd have to do that before, um, um, before because I, I can't base it on the hole that I'm basing. So let me. I'm just going to drag it above that hole. Oh, okay. Now when I come here and I do that, for my termination, I'm going to pick that plane. That's how that's you do it. You can't do it in the command, but you'd have to. So you might do that hexagon first, where you want, where you know you want that to be, and then you'll be able to fit in. Yeah. Is there a uh, studded, uh, uh, threaded stud on this also, where you can put uh, put a stud in that's going to stay you know, <coughs> against the metal, and you just have the thread on the other end? Um, I, no, they have some. Uh, they have no. They just have the ribbon nuts. Okay. They don't have they don't have the studs, but you can get those from a master. Okay. You guys know what he's talking about, right? The Same thing, like you know, you this the hold, it holds your tires on your vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want? Something like this? Or you have? Oh, what you're showing yesterday. Have it yeah. yeah. Stuck in it, so you don't have to do hokey stuff like tapping your plate, tapping your plate, then running a screw through it, just so you can use a use a thumb screw. That looks. 
like you don't know what you're doing. Seriously, if I saw that, I'd be like, the hell? I'm not buying this piece of crap. <laughs> Why not just use one of those? These ones either have very little parts to take out or it's flush. And then once you powder coat it, the flush ones you can't tell. Um, same thing with not swipe, weld, a hex nut on the outside when you just punch a hole and push one of these in. It's a lot better, it's a lot nicer, a lot quicker, and they don't cost that much more. So, these things are, if you're doing sheet metal, get to know insert nuts and rivet nuts. Rivet nuts are like this, but it's put on like a, like a pop rivet. You kind of put it in, you pull the trigger, and it squeezes and sandwiches the metal instead of actually pressing into it. And here's the whole line, or most, most of the, some of the other options. And I've got captive nuts in the back if you want to see those. And the whole catalog's back there, it's the, the PEM uh, catalog. Okay, anything else? Any other questions today? Yep. Uh, you know how we were talking about the stuff, the thread sets and stuff? Yep. How would you do like a splitting step? Would you just do a splash step? Have you ever seen one of those? Um, oh. If, instead of basically screwing in for your tires and stuff, you hammer it in because it's splined like a gear shaft and it's a really tight fit and then the other side's threaded. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, or just do a shaft. So, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've got one in the back. Um, yeah, you just do a shaft with, and you do that, your, your little raised pieces, and you array it around. Uh, kind of like, you guys do that tape dispenser when I was gone the other day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the top yeah, of it, right. it had a little piece. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how you just extrude it, fill it, it and then array it. Anything else? Anything else on anything we've talked about all semester? Because next week we're doing welding stuff. Then we're going to do a couple weeks of rendering. What is rendering? What is rendering? Anybody? Adding detail, color, um, lights. Making it, making it look good. Oh, okay. So making something that you print out on the color printer to, that, to look good. or um, Similarly realistic stuff? The posters are rendered. <laughs> Something like... <clears throat> that. Okay. So you need like color and texture. Yeah. Usually so. they're going to be this big. That's like a hundred hours of work right now. Let me drop the CNC in the desk over there, too. <laughs> Those are a thousand times speed. <laughs> yeah, it is. So, we're going to do something like that. But we're not going to do animation. We're just going to do single shots. And why are we going to do rendering in this class? Get a job. Besides that, once you're working, why would would you ever you use that when you're the, working? An yeah. idea to like to like to say yeah, show them how it would look to explain really the project. Yeah, yeah. To present something to, to a customer or to marketing or yeah. your boss. How do you think we got this lab <laughs> from that that first video that I did when I showed them the, the drawing of it? They went, huh? <laughs> when I showed them the video, they were, oh, okay, yeah, that looks good. Let's do that. <laughs> so, when you're dealing with people that can't read these, 
you have to do something like a rendering to show them what it's going to look like. And so we'll talk. So we'll spend a couple weeks on rendering because rendering is hard. I mean, it's, it's a different kind of hard. Lights are difficult. It depends on how hmm? how perfectionistic you are. Because I've, like on that animation, I spent probably 15 hours on lights alone. So you do render, you don't. And so there's there's a lot of kind of, and there's still stuff I don't like about it. <laughs> like you should be an engineer for the lights. You know, like the, light. the glare on the floor over there was really bad. <clears throat> so we're gonna spend a couple weeks so we can kind of get into it. And there's not really that much you can change in Inventor anyways, but we're still gonna kind of get through it, and see how it is. Um, just, <coughs> actually, we might do some basic animation stuff in it also. So questions? <coughs>